Well, hey everybody. Okay, this is a little bit exciting. I'm doing a trial version here of how I would critique a painting. If you were to send me one via email, because you're one of my new highest level patrons. So I'm working on one of my own paintings here um, to show you the kind of thing that I can do. I'll be using Photoshop to manipulate this but then at the end that will have created a file of the picture with all the fixits on it and it also will have created a recording of the session. So let's get right to it. Okay, so one of the first things I notice is how bitty it is. That whole bottom two thirds of the painting, there's too much colour on there, it's too bold. It needs to calm its farm right down. So in Photoshop, what I need to do is select the whole area. So all of this. And then I can, I could lighten it right up. So that works fairly well to lighten it right up. It's made me aware of just how light I want those colours to be. Or I could come in and I could change the saturation. So I could just bring everything down a little bit closer to grey. So I've taken some of the colour out. So that gives me a clue. I need, I need some more greyness not only some lightness so I'll, I'll leave that grayness in there and then I'll come back in and I'll lighten it a bit too. So that's much closer to what I need it to be. Yeah. So that's all very well with Photoshop. How would I do that with paint? So I'd probably get some glaze medium with a little titanium white and a little bit of grey so a little bit of carbon black in there and I'd maybe use a tablespoon of glaze medium with a pea sized lump of paint, mix all that together and I'd paint it right across that whole area. So that would still allow a lot of this lovely runny stuff from underneath to show through, but it would calm its farm. So the next thing I notice is that I've managed to do this lovely curve there. And that's not actually what I want at all. This is quite angular along the top here. And I'm not loving the curve. So if, if I select it all, and go in with the idea of warping it and I pull it up on this corner, see straight away just how much more dramatic that is because it's not so curved. So anywhere you can, you want to angularize what you're doing. Straight lines are absolutely your friend. So I might also just pull it down. No, see, I don't want a straight line there. Maybe, hmm. you know what? I think I can't do that. With Photoshop. No, not with my admittedly limited Photoshop skills. So I'm going to leave that there. At least that corner is where I want it. Now the next thing I note, if I get my pencil and I want to change it to be some kind of fairly dark, about that kind of colour. And I want to get in here and start to define some of these areas here. So some of these are quite sharp and there's a whole lot of this stuff going in there. So there's a lot of little fine mark making and it gives us these directions across the place. I maybe need a bit of a darker colour there. Let's try that one. So up, oh that's better. So some marks 
up into here. Something else I'm creating here is the idea that right here, this becomes my important area. So, so what I've called chicken in, in a lot of the things I do. So chicken noodle soup, every painting should have some chicken, which is the focus area, some noodles, which is the other stuff, but also some soup, which is the quiet passive areas. And there should be quite a lot of that. So even just with that little bit of line work, see the difference it's made? Now, if I change my pencil back to a white one and I make it a whole hell of a lot bigger, I can also come in here and I can emphasize some of these areas. So here, I'd probably get some texture paste and mixed it with some white paint so that I can create these lovely solid marks. I might even play with painting those just with solid paint, uh, a free flow, highly pigmented paint so that I can get some quite flat areas of colour across here. Make my pencil smaller a bit. Make it a bit less see-through too so that I can come in here and get a little bit more of this kind of thing going on. Okay, so see, just with those few changes, I've got it made, I've got it looking a whole lot more like the hillside it's supposed to look like. Now, up there to the trees. So what I can see, I love the bright blue of the sky. That's just so Australian. I'm also liking, I've, I've put a few trunks on there already, but I reckon I need a few more. So I'll probably come in, not with a pencil that big, and get in a few more. So to do that, one thing that works really well is to have a nibbed bottle with a mix of half and half paint and water in it. So you, if you're on my Patreon, you would have seen me using squishy bottles and that's ideal to do that sort of stuff. Then I'd start to get in there with some stenciling and I would use my foliage stencil, which is, you can get them on the Arts Tree website, and some texture paste and a few different shades of green. So I'd probably, I'd be looking, looking for some, no, a bit more yellow than that. I'd probably be looking, I'd probably be looking for these kinds of greens in there. So some quite olivey, dirty greens. And my pencil's a bit big. So I'd be using the stencil to get in a whole bunch of little marks like that. Now if I change my colour again, make it a bit lighter. Now with the magic of Photoshop, if I come in here, then I can start to repeat those marks in a few different places. Now this is just Photoshop and it, it, you know, it's a bit limited when you're only as skilled as I am with it, to tell you the absolute truth. But I'd start to use stencils and texture paste up there. So I would, I'd mix three different colors of texture paste they all would have some Naples yellow in them because the texture paste is not opaque by itself. The Naples yellow would make it opaque. And then I'd put some different greens in there. One I'd put a little bit of olive green, one I'd put a little bit of sap green, and one maybe I'd put a bit of green black in there as well. So three different greens that went all the way from quite dark to quite light. And I'd stencil 
some foliage shapes up there in the top to make it happen. And that would continue. I'd bring some over into here too. And just really watch that I left that clear window up in the corner there and really watch that I left some of these openings. Then I'd start playing with grass and I'd do that again with texture paste but with a rubber tipped tool to, to mix that around. But you know what? I think I'm going to take it back to the studio first and do some of these things down the bottom to get that big embankment looking right. So yeah, that's how I think I can help you in sorting out your paintings. There's lots of reasons that a painting might not be working and if we can troubleshoot them with line, tone, colour and edge, then we can sort them out. So line is matters of drawing and that's things like me pulling that cliff face up towards the top of the painting. Tone is lightness and darkness and that's like me making that whole cliff face much, much paler because I had just too much colour, too much stuff and it was bitty. So that's line, that's tone. Colour, that was about desaturating things. So calming the colour down because I just had too much going on. I know it's my thing, I love colour, but that was too much. And edge, that's about softening things down. Um, sometimes less is more. Not that I really want to admit that. Okay, so there's a start. I'll show you some more things of, of how I can help you with making your paintings better as time goes by. And I look forward to seeing you on my Patreon page. And together we can make your paintings the best they have ever been. Okay, bye everybody.